All right. Well, welcome everybody to NIMTIC's uh, Transportation Conformity Termination Review Session. Uh, my name is Mark Maglienzi. I'm with NIMTIC's uh, technical group, and we'll be, I'll be walking you through this overview uh, and review of uh, NIMTIC's Transportation Conformity for the 2023-2027 TIP and 2026-2050 Regional Transportation Plan. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so we'll do a, a quick intro and then we'll we'll go do an overview of what transfer, transportation conformity is. We'll cover uh, attainment and non-attainment areas and how those are identified and classified. And then we'll go into some of the regional emissions analysis process itself, which is the sort of core of the conformity determination. And then we'll look at the results. So first, New York Metropolitan Transportation Council is the uh, Metro, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization for the New York Metro area of New York State. It consists of nine uh, voting members and seven advisory members. And as a council, they come together to make decisions on the use of federal transportation funds for its planning area. And they produce planning products such as the Long Range Transportation Plan, the Transportation Improvement Program, which is the five year program among other uh, required products, including uh, transportation conformity determinations that are associated with those long range and short term programs. Uh, transportation conformity in general, it comes from the Clean Air Act amendments of 1990, which set what are called national ambient air quality standards. These are uh, standards for certain criteria pollutant, pollutants that are, can be found in the air, in the open air. And the process is required to be eligible for federal transportation funding and to gain approval for areas that are either non attainment or maintenance areas. These are areas that have, are either not currently not meeting or have previously not met those air quality standards that we just mentioned above. So, this process in general is a way of connecting the air quality planning with transportation planning in the region. And because it's transportation conformity, it's focused on mobile sources emissions from cars, trucks, uh, motorcycles, and transit. There are other conformity uh, processes and approvals, but we're focused on transportation. Uh, this specific transportation conformity, uh, there are a number of reasons why uh, a conformity determination is triggered or is required, uh, including the development of a new long range plan or a new. Uh, Five year transportation improvement program, but also when you make amendments to non exempt plant, uh, projects in either of those documents. So, this current 2024 determination is required and is being undertaken due to amendments to both those products. Real, br real brief overview of the steps that are uh, take place for, for a uh, determination are to uh, first forecast uh, the mobile source emissions from that program or plan uh, and look forward into the future of what, what those emissions might be on your transportation network. Once you have those total emissions, you compare those uh, totals to emission budgets that are set by the state implementation plan for air quality. And with that check, you will, you will then establish that the emission budgets uh, ideally will not be exceeded and then therefore uh, the tip and the plan conform to the SIP. So you're ultimately trying to show that the your future transportation network uh, conforms to the state's plan for air quality or the SIP. And what is that state implementation plan or SIP? This is a, a plan developed by the state, uh, by the state DEC, to address those non-attainment areas or maintenance areas uh, that have not met not meeting or have previously not met the national ambient air quality standards. So it's the state's plan, a uh, long range plan to, to then attain and meet those standards by a certain target year. And baked into those plans are uh, various tools and various approaches, including most relevant to us are the establishment of emission budgets for certain pollutants and pollutant types. Uh, and for our, for, for, sector transportation, the, the key 
budget is the mobile source emission budgets. There are other budgets for other uh, sources, but for us, we're concerned, of course, with the mobile source emission budgets, the maximum amount of uh, a certain pollutants that are allowed in the transportation sector. And those are the budgets that are, uh, affect the, the long range plan and the five year program. And the pollutants in those uh, currently in our area of concern are ozone and fine particulate matter, which is PM 2.5, which is uh, particulate matter that's smaller than, than 2.5 mic micrometers. Along the way through the process, we consult, there's a lot of consult consultation with uh, what's called the Interagency Consultation Group or ICG. This is made up of members from EPA, uh, Federal Highway Administration, FTA, State Department of Trans uh, Transportation and State Environmental Conservation. And in January, when we began the process, uh, ICG did concur that NIMPIC had undertaken this effort with the latest planning assumptions, an acceptable demand modeling approach, uh, appropriate mobile source emissions post-processor, and appropriate consideration of non-exempt and regionally significant projects, and the uh, conducted the required or will be conducting the required mobile source uh, emissions test to determine conformity with this episode. We'll go through those in a little bit more detail as we go through. Just a real quick note about the national standards and non-attainment or maintenance areas. This is schematic only, but the idea is that once the national air quality standards uh, are defined with a certain criteria, the next step is air, actual air quality measurements taken at points throughout the state and throughout the country. Based on those measurements and values that they uh, that they attain, the uh, certain areas are then designated as either non-attainment or uh, attainment, and then uh, maps of those areas are are generated by by EPA. Of of note here is that within a non-attainment area, there can be different levels of uh, classification within that non-attainment area. And similarly, if you were in a non-attainment state and then begin to attain the standard, you'll be moved uh, temporarily into what's called a maintenance, uh, maintenance classification, where you will continue to uh, test and maintain uh, and conduct conformity analysis until a certain period of time is passed, in which case you move then to complete um, uh, full attainment. So looking at our region uh, real quickly, just an overview of the two, two areas of concern. We have an, on the left, the eight hour ozone non-attainment area delineated in light blue. And on the right, the PM 2.5 maintenance area also delineated in blue in a different color. Key here is that the areas uh, extend beyond the MPO, NIMTX MPO boundary into New Jersey, into Connecticut in both scenarios. The lines, the, the areas are slightly different and that's based on uh, a lot of different factors, how these areas are chosen, but we'll see how those affect our emissions analysis later on. So now we're zooming in on those two areas for just the New York portion. The entire area uh, is called the New York, Northern New Jersey, Long Island, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, non-attainment and maintenance areas, but we are zooming in just on that New York portion of those areas. So on the left, the eight-hour ozone uh, non-attainment area is shaded in orange, and you can see uh, the key point here is that the the, sh the shaded area does not extend all the way to the edge of the Niptix boundary. So there's one county, Putnam County, which is not included in this non-attainment area, and that affects our regional emissions analysis because we don't include emissions totals from the county of Putnam that, that, that are generated from that Putnam in our forecasts. Similarly, on the right-hand side for PM 2.5, the maintenance area in light green uh, does not include Putnam as well, but it also does include another county outside of the Nymptic boundary, it's Orange County, which is a separate MPO. But through our, using this emissions process, we, we do include the results of Orange County in our PM 2.5 maintenance area analysis. So these are just a, a showing of the, the difference in the areas and the MPO boundaries. Very quick overview, uh, a high level overview of the actual regional emissions analysis itself. It involves uh, 
taking all the non-exempt projects uh, from all the member agencies and all those areas and entering them into our travel demand model, the New York best practice model or New York BPM, which is a, which is a co highly complicated uh, travel demand model, which, for, which can uh, simulate future traffic uh, movement and trips taken by individuals throughout the region on the network. And so we entered those new future projects into the code them into the model and we run future scenario years uh, as determined by icg and uh, through our consultation process we pick several years to to model uh, using bpm and at the end of the day generate vehicle miles traveled and vehicle hours traveled we take those results and enter them into epa's moves uh, simulator which is a a simulator that generates emissions from the vehicle miles traveled, uh, taking into account the uh, number of vehicles, the types of vehicles, the fuel information. So information that would uh, generate emissions themselves based on the vehicle miles traveled. And the results are for each pollutant in each county and each future scenario year. So we have those total emissions that we've generated out into the future on our network in these areas of concern. Once we have that, we then compare those totals with the, again, the, the uh, emissions budgets that are set by the, the SIP. So the results uh, of the emissions analysis, uh, there are several tests, there are two tests rather for each uh, pollutant of concern. So we have our criteria pollutant here is the air ozone. On the bottom there on the left, we have our ozone non-attainment area. The emission test, one of the two emissions tests for ozone is, is daily nitrogen oxides or NOx, which is an ozone precursor. So we, we test for that uh, pollutant. And on the right, you can see the results of our uh, forecast emissions in blue uh, compared to the uh, ozone SIP budget for NOx in orange. And so you can see that our, our, our forecasted numbers are below the budget. For NOx. The second test for eight hour ozone is the daily volatile organic compounds or VOCs, which is another ozone precursor. And down on the left, the area again is uh, all areas except Putnam County within the NIMTIC boundary. And the results again on the right in blue, the total emissions uh, for total daily VOX are below the ozone SIP budget of 54.1 for total tons per day of VOC. Moving to P PM 2.5, uh, the maintenance area, the first emissions test is the uh, annu annual NOx or nitrogen oxides, which is a PM 2.5 precursor also. And as you can see the area, it, it's all nine counties, uh, not all nine counties, uh, nine counties in Nimtek except for Putnam, but also including Orange County. Uh, based on that map that we showed before. And the results, uh, as you can see on the right, are that the, the total of forecasted emissions are below the SIP budget for, for annual NOx. And then the last test is uh, annual PM 2.5 itself. All counties, again, including Orange, and except for Putnam, all counties except Putnam, including Orange. And the results on the right for uh, total forecast PM 2.5 in tons per year are below the uh, the SIP budget for annual 2.5. So with the results from that test, we can conclude that the proposed amendments that are being proposed to uh, the federal fiscal year 2023-2027 TIP and the federal fiscal year 2022-2050 regional transportation plan as amended do conform with the applicable New York State SIP for ozone and PM 2.5. And we can say that the transportation conformity determination demonstrates the consistency of the TIP and playing with the intent of the Clean Air Act amendments of 1990 and the state and federal transportation conformity regulations. So the draft uh, transportation conformity Determination has been developed in accordance with relevant federal regulations, and this 30 day public comment period for the draft uh, will conclude on Thursday, May 23rd, 2024 at 4 p.m. 
uh, it, all document, uh, all draft documentation is available uh, for viewing on our website under the under the uh, get involved section the links on the page. And uh, additional comments can be made or submitted at any time during that comment period by email or mail to the following addresses. So with that, I will uh, stop sharing and just make sure there's no additional, any questions. And I don't see any questions. So with that, thank you for all coming and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Uh, you can stop recording.